Whether they're taking over the world or just need to rob a bank, these villains are certainly carrying some emotional baggage. One more diamond, my love. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 villain backstories in movies. Ooh, frickity hoo! I had the best grades in the class and I didn't get diddly squat! For this list, we're looking at those classic cinematic villains and are choosing those with the best and most effective stories that offer us a glimpse into why they're bad to the bone. And just so you know, a spoiler alert is probably in order. They chased Candyman through the town to Cabrini Green, where they proceeded to saw off his right hand with a rusty blade. Number 10, The Grinch, Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Santa. <gasps> oh, oh, it's Christmas. Yes, that is a Santa play. Do you want to hold the Santa play oh. Oh. The famous Dr. Seuss book and timeless animated short didn't offer much background for the famous green Christmas hater. I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years, I put up with it now. But the filmmakers devised a backstory that'll make anybody shed a tear for this misunderstood creep. Once we discover that the Grinch has been a victim of some nasty schoolyard bullying, his crusade against Christmas cheer is more than understandable. You don't have a chance with her. You're eight years old and you have a beard. <laughs> Anyone who's humiliated in front of the love of his or her life is justified in wanting to live a life of solitude. The Grinch just took his anger a bit too far. I we are glad, however, that he abandons his all-out war against Whoville and becomes a beloved member of the community in the end. Merry Christmas, one and all! <laughs> Number 9, Freddy Krueger, The Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Delving into much darker territory, we now follow the Dream Master himself. Freddy Krueger. In a franchise spanning nine films so far, Krueger is clearly fueled by revenge. But only at the end of the first film do we learn his motive for targeting Elm Street kids. Turns out that Krueger was also a child killer in real life. To stop him, the parents on Elm Street chased him down and burned him alive. I took gasoline. I poured it all around the place and made a trail of it out the door. Then lit the whole thing up and watched it burn. More secrets about the killer's past emerge in later films, but it's the first reveal that packs the biggest punch. This is just a dream. You're not alive. This whole thing is just a dream. Number eight, Maleficent. Maleficent. Go now, father! One of Disney's most terrifying and enduring villains, Maleficent received the origin story treatment in her own self-titled live-action epic. And it was nothing like we expected. Although villain backstories often rely on a sad past to make us feel some pity, this origin transformed this evil queen into a lovable anti-hero. I like you, begging. Do it again. Backstabbed and stripped of her beautiful wings by Stefan, her human friend and future king, Maleficent's desire for revenge becomes understandable. Her complexity grows as we learn that she ends up caring for the princess she is cursed. I will not ask your forgiveness. Because what I've done to you is unforgivable. It's difficult to pinpoint where our loyalties lie with this one. To be a fairy creature without wings. In a world where you don't belong. Number seven, Jason Voorhees, the Friday the 13th franchise. <laughs> Though he is the iconic masked face of this famous franchise, Jason only appears in the final seconds of the original film. <laughs> Prior to that, the entire first film sets up the backstory that creates one of cinema's most enduring serial killers. That's when his psychotic mother goes on a killing spree to get revenge for the death of her young neglected son, who drowned at Camp Crystal Lake while the counselors were busy fornicating. I was the cook. Jason should have been watched every minute. 
we even end up feeling bad for the poor innocent child. That is, until he starts killing every horny teen in sight. <coughs> Number six, Alec Trevelyan, Goldeneye. Why can't you just be a good boy and die? You first. James Bond has faced his fair share of interesting villains, but none has hit him more personally than Goldeneye's Alec Trevelyan. You're late, 007. I have to stop in the bathroom. Ready to save the world again? After you, 006. A remarkable character. He begins as an agent and ally alongside James, but soon turns out to be Britain's and James's greatest threat. Similar to Raoul Silva in Skyfall, Trevelyan is an ex-MI6 agent out for revenge, in this case because he blames the British government for the deaths of his parents. And in one of life's little ironies, the son went to work for the government whose betrayal caused the father to kill himself and his wife. Beginning his path to retribution early, he trains with MI6 and eventually plans to wipe out Britain's economy with help from the GoldenEye satellite. If you don't bet big, you can't win big, but you might lose big. You know, James, I was always better. Number five, Syndrome, The Incredibles. I was wrong to treat you that way. I'm sorry. See, now you respect me because I'm a threat. It didn't take much to set young Buddy Pine off and make him the world's most dangerous supervillain. Having been ignored by his idol, Mr. Incredible, when he tries to help him fight crime, young Buddy vows to one day get revenge on the superheroes he once idolized and revered. Well, I've finally figured out who I am. I am your ward. Incrediboy! Although not as elaborate or destructive as other backstories, it's fascinating to witness how such a small action can have such dire consequences. Take this one home and make sure his mom knows what he's been doing. I can help you! You're making a mistake! Mr. Incredible's choice directly influences Buddy and sets him on his path to become Syndrome, his most dangerous nemesis. Moral of the story, kids, if you get famous, don't ignore your fans. Oh, don't worry, I'll be a good mentor. Supportive, encouraging, everything you weren't. Number four, Hannibal Lecter, the Hannibal Lecter franchise. I know that I'm not smarter than you. Then how did you catch me, Will? You had disadvantages. What disadvantages? You're insane. What started as a minor character has evolved into one of literature and cinema's most beloved and feared madmen. Sounds charming. Most audiences were introduced to Lecter's mysterious demeanor and unnerving sense of macabre menace in The Silence of the Lambs. But that story began in media res when it comes to Hannibal the Cannibal's backstory. Two prequels fill in the blanks for us, beginning with Red Dragon, which reveals a bit more about why Lecter is in jail. Ultimately, however, it's the demented Hannibal rising that gives us the full backstory we deserve filling in details about how he lost his family. My studies are fascinating and absorb me completely. And where he acquired his peculiar palate and his taste for vengeance. Yet I still find myself thinking about my sister and the men who took her from me. Number three, Lord Voldemort, the Harry Potter franchise. Harry Potter. The boy who lived. The world's greatest dark wizard needed an appropriately disturbing backstory, one that took eight films and a full decade to reveal in full. Horcrux. I came across the term while reading, and I didn't fully understand it. Motivated by a fear of death and his hatred of his half-blood heritage, and armed with the prophetical knowledge that one child has the power to vanquish him, Tom Riddle evolves into Lord Voldemort. A wizard so evil, most witches and wizards dare not speak his name. And who owned that wand? We do not speak his name. His story is pieced together through flashbacks and memories, each of which helps us to understand Voldemort's dark beginnings and vengeful pursuits a little better, and satisfying our curiosity about the motivations of this evil villain. I can make things move without touching them. I can make animals do what I want without training them. I can make bad things happen to people who are mean to me. Number two, Magneto, the X-Men franchise. 
Still fighting the good fight. From here, it doesn't look like they're playing by your rules. Magneto is the only comic book villain on this list, and that's saying something about director Brian Singer's talent and the indelible performances of both Ian McKellen and Michael Fassbender. This brilliant franchise flipped all formulas on their head with the incredibly sad and touching backstory of supervillain Magneto. Seeing a young Eric Lencher ripped apart from his parents at a Nazi concentration camp and discovering his magnetic powers at the same time gets our hearts hurting for the poor man who would be Magneto, a character we should normally despise. This short opening scene paved the way for a long-running franchise where the line between hero and villain is often blurred. Alles ist gut. Drei. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. The cancer isn't what started me in my work. It was the moment I decided to end my life that started me in my work and brought meaning to it. Life is cruel. Why should the afterlife be any different? Do you know what the scariest thing is? To not know your place in this world. To not know why you're here. Peter Creek was born Simon Peter Gruber. He's Hans Gruber's brother. Number one, Darth Vader, the Star Wars franchise. Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. Another famous villain who's central to an entire franchise, Darth Vader's image and background remained a mystery for years. Although glimpses into his past in the original trilogy revealed family problems akin to a Greek tragedy. Why didn't you tell me? You told me Vader betrayed and murdered my father. Your father was seduced by the dark side of the Force. It wasn't until the prequel trilogy that we learned how the man once known as Anakin Skywalker became the evil figure in the Black Helmet. We eagerly watched young Anakin grow up and struggle with his inborn skills, knowing full well what fate had in store for him. What will happen to me now? Reaching a climax in Episode 3, and torn between Obi-Wan and Darth Sidious, the death of Anakin's wife is the final piece that leads Skywalker to succumb to the dark side once and for all. It seems in your anger you killed her. I... I couldn't have. She was alive. I felt it. Do you agree with our list? Best I've ever seen. Which villain backstories have marked you the most? Why do you ask questions to which you already know the answers? For more outrageous top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. It is pointless to resist. Thank <music> you.